Hey you guys, this is Elizabeth with today's Mama Lecture. A Mama Lecture is where I give you my thinking or advice in a minute or less, just like I do with my kids. Today's is three parts. It's a big old topic. It's called dealing with difficult emotions. That's our theme for this week. The whole month, month of March, we're talking about big emotions. This week is about the difficult ones, like sadness, grief, fear, um, anger. And I'm coming to you fresh with managing my own grief. This is why I have no eye makeup on. Um, for a variety of reasons, but largely because my, I love my kids so much and my youngest is going to college at the end of the summer. And I think I meet grief on a daily basis about that, the letting go of that beautiful child. And what I know about big emotions, particularly the difficult ones, is it's really important to give them room, to give them room and to feel them, not think about them, but to feel them, to give space. So I've got two more videos with some thoughts and suggestions about what's helped me the most. Okay, here is my first recommendation, which is to use sound, is to use sound. Now, I'm a theater person by training. I, I have always been a theater kid, and then I went and did undergrad and grad in theater. So I have lots of practice around this. Um, and even still, I can feel shy about it, but it, I find it super helpful. And, and I'm not gonna say, like, talk about it. I'm gonna say make sounds, okay? For instance, um, if you're feeling intense grief, like is what I'm working through, you can, ah, uh, and what you, I do is I try to feel the sensation and then, ah, uh, make sound from there. Are you with me? Or say anger. You can even use mouth movements. <laughs> feel into that emotion and allow yourself to vocalize and use your mouth to move and express some of what's in there with me? Now on to two. Okay, here's two. Two is movement. Using movement to express and move emotion in the body. And so again, the first the first thing you do is you drop into that feeling. You really deeply sense, put your awareness in your body where that feeling is, and then allow yourself to move from there. And it can take practice and developing trust. But after a while, you'll start to notice like, oh, when I feel that feeling, my body wants to just get big and stretch, or maybe it wants to make lots of fast motions, or maybe it wants to almost do something imperceptibly quiet, you know? Um, and I mean, sometimes when I do it, I'll notice like, oh, I've disconnected, I'm doing some kind of like movement from an exercise class, and then I'll come back and feel again and see what my body wants to do. And I know that this, and using my voice is almost more satisfying than talking it through. Unless I have someone who's very attuned listening, these sorts of things help me more than anything else. I hope that helps. I just thought of one more thing I wanna say. I think the biggest gift you can give yourself is staying with yourself. Because often as children, our parents and caregivers were not comfortable with big emotion in themselves. So then they couldn't be comfortable with it in their, the people around them. So they would squash it or ask it, you know, find ways to get it to stop. And so f now that we are adults and with our own children, the, the most beautiful thing you can do is stay. Stay with yourself, stay with your children, make room. Not even to change it, right? The intention often isn't even to change what's happening. It's just to be present with it. And I think that is the greatest gift we can offer ourselves and to stay with that emotion. And if you run out of time or energy to stay with that emotion, you say, hey, I'm here. I'll come back. I'll come back to you later this afternoon. And then you do. Same with the people you love around you. To tune in, make space, or attune, make space, and stay with it until it feels complete. That's an incredible gift. Okay, I hope that helps.